Hello, welcome everybody. We have Sasha here. Sasha is my girlfriend. <laughs> and Sasha uh, has not been playing a lot of paddle because we had a beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to get back into shape. <laughs> oh, nice. Sasha is now uh, in Netherlands a six. So one is amazing and 10 is absolutely garbage. So I think what would be a good goal is to get to a five to get one level better. Sasha has been playing paddle for seven years. You started with tennis at the same time, so you don't make the mistakes that tennis players make, but sometimes you, you, you struggle against people that play very fast rhythm. So I think we should try to focus on, on how Sasha is able to beat men from a similar level because the, the problem is that there are not so many girls from your level. So this will be a series, like how Sasha can improve, what steps we take first, what things that we notice about Sasha's game, but we're not going to say anything about that because sometimes that's quite difficult that maybe you make a mistake and then we don't say anything about it because we focus on one thing first. So I think we have to focus on footwork at the moment. <laughs> you haven't played a lot of paddles, so I think the quick movements, the, the turning into the corner is important. Sasha prefers to play on the left side. Uh, I think her strength is your bandeja. There are not so many players from your level that, that have that quality of the bandeja, but you don't have a killer smash, so sometimes you can also play on the right side. So maybe we are going to look into getting Sasha into smashing, but because she has not played a lot of paddle, we need to start with rhythm first. So we're gonna start at the back of the court and we're going to take it from there. Vamos! Vamos! Okay. Ah, lekker boelie! And we have seals on just paddle.com. I like it. You like it? Good match. So we're going to start with an exercise. I'm going to play to Sasha her feet. The first ball she has to play a forehand, the second ball a backhand. Third ball forehand, fourth ball backhand. And we do this to activate the feet. So this is a very good warm up because you need to move a lot. And also we can spot any troubles, difficulties that Sasha may face. And we can design the game plan from there. One zero. Oh, eh, eh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah means sorry, sorry, coach. I misunderstood the exercise. I was not listening. Nice. Okay, nice. Next exercise. Next exercise. One ball before the glass, one ball with the glass. So I can make it harder or easier to help her or to, to, to not help her. Nice. So in this way, you are not only warming up, but also mentally to make decisions on the court, which I think is a nice exercise. Did you like it? Yes. Yeah. So the next exercise, the next exercise <laughs> is only forehand of the glass. So the first ball, I play a little bit in the center. You play on these cones in the center, because if you play on the center, it's difficult for them to play into the corner. And the second ball, I play on the glass number four, and then you move away and you play short on the cones that are over there. And we do this because uh, we want to get the feeling back. So if you haven't played a while, sometimes it's difficult to change the direction of the ball or the handling the speed. So for everybody at home, if you want to improve your timing, your technique, work with cones and also try to focus on uh, softer, faster, more to the left, more to the right, decision making, because that will help you to know how close you are. So we're going to take a look how close Sasha can be to the cones if she maybe 
is able to hit the cone, that would be nice. And change direction. And she has to move a lot because forehand and forehand moving away. So the goal is to hit the cone. Nice. Very good. My goal for you would be to play the ball lower over the net. So I think if you play against men from the same level, they don't, they're not so good in paddle, but they're from tennis. If you give them balls here, you're, you're gone in a nice way. My goal for you would be to play uh, this height over the net. What would be the best way for you to play the ball lower over the net? I think there is a massive difference with you hitting the ball here or there. So you need to move in a way that this doesn't happen, but yeah. that happens. Yeah. So what I want you to do is to, this is why we do this exercise, to move away a lot. So if the ball is coming cross courts to your forehand, you need to move a lot so you can play down. Good. Distance. Yes. Distance. Nice. Distance. Rotate even more with the second ball. So when you are playing to the cones from to the fence, this would be complicated. So what I want you to, to find out is your left shoulder should always aim to one of the cones. Yeah. So this is why you always work with multiple targets, not with one, because you can feel the difference. So what I want Sasha to feel is aiming with the shoulders, aiming with the body, making space making her move more than normal or moving her into a realistic situation. I, I see more things that I would like to do, but that's not the first thing. Very nice. Make space. Yeah. Yeah. So the moment the ball is going here in the center, be careful with getting too close to the ball. So with the first one in the center, be far from the ball. To, yeah, be careful with getting, going to the ball. With the other one, you should move more. So with the first one, you should move less. And with the second ball, you should move a bit more. Yeah, it's too much, too, the ball goes up too much. The angle to the fence is not the best option. But if you want to achieve that goal, you need to play the ball low over the net. So if your ball is slightly too high, it's never going to go there. So this is why it's important. So I think the biggest difference was the space that you had with the ball and the movement was better and better and better. So it felt like more natural. Now with the back end. So the first ball is going to the first glass. So you're gonna take it right after the bounce yeah. to hit as much back ends as possible and also the return because this is similar to the return. So what I want you to try is to get it quickly after the bounce. So glass and then boom. Then the second ball is going to do double wall. So you're going to play the back end. So you're going to move away, play the back end. So we're going to see how you do that. So try to move early, but not too early. That is still realistic. And also the goal would be to play every ball in the center of the, of the court. We play with one target because double wall is already complicated enough. And I think if you play double wall, you should not play to where I'm standing now because that's way too complicated. That's nice. One more step. So to adjust, make more smaller steps. Because this is crucial, because making a big step is complicated and you also need to time it really, really well. Nice. Good. Good. Nice. Small steps. Very good. Again. Now. Good. Yeah, so sometimes it's random. You still have to look where the ball is bouncing. So what I think is important for you to see how close the ball is bouncing to the back wall. Just look at the result of the ball. If the ball is bouncing quite early, the ball comes into your body a lot. So you have to make sure to get that early. If I play the ball slightly over that um, intersection of the glass, like here, the ball dies. Yeah. If I play it deeper, close to the 
it comes out a lot. Yeah. So you need to try to find the depth of the ball. Yeah, and sometimes you're already going. Yeah. So still try to have a look, move away, but not too soon. Yeah. Move slowly. Nice. Yes. Nice, now you're watching where the ball's bouncing. Very good. More steps. So the, the last mistake was that you were making a little bit less mistake, a little bit less steps. And I think what is important for you is making the steps with the racket. Sometimes you go with your body first and if you go with the racket first, it helps you to rotate the shoulders. Yeah. And also, if the ball comes, oh, if the ball ends up being different than you expected, you can always go forward. Yeah. So before the ball bounced, make sure your racket is behind you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe even earlier. Racket back. Yes. Yeah, but now you're uh, rushing. When we were training in Castellón with Alex, yeah. we, all, we had those rubber bands between the feet to yeah. only make small steps. Mm -hmm. This is how you should think. Now we do random. So you don't know where the ball's coming. Yeah. Because I want you, instead of already going, that, that you have to watch a little bit more. Can you prepare with your backhand defending double wall? Okay. I think this is too difficult because the ball's coming from here. I think what would be better for you is to open a little bit more okay. because if the ball is low, you can solve this. Yeah. If because then no, yeah, exactly. So what I want you to do is I'm going to play different heights. If the ball is high, I want you to prepare high because then you can go down. If the ball is low, prepare low. And then the most important thing, look at this shade. The moment you're preparing, your racket is not allowed to go there. Look at the racket. No, again, look <laughs> at the racket. No, wait, racket back. Exactly, like this. And I don't feel the left hand like, uh, this is, for me, is a no-go. So this is very relaxed. No, there's no right and wrong. Well, it's wrong actually, it's, it's terrible. There is no tension in your left hand because this is a very relaxed motion. Back, so now there's tension in my hand. The only thing I'm gonna do is double wall. So remove the rope, prepare. Yeah, it's still a bit horizontal. This would be better. Yes, exactly. If you want to improve the left hand, so if you want to prove your control, the power, your body rotation, if you want to be a good defender with the backhand, and if you have troubles with the backhand, this is one of the best exercises that you can do. Your racket tends to go in this position. And sometimes this is too close to your body to get power. So what I think, now, especially for women, the swing can be a little bit longer, but I would recommend it to have it here, further back. Yes, like this. So if you take the shoulder and your racket, the, the bottom of your racket is aiming more or less to the other side of the court, this is enough power for you. Wait, wait, not, not the right one. Like 45 degrees. For your imagination, the racket should touch the glass. Yeah, you need to move away from the ball. Better. Great defense. Below, below, below. Move more. Away from the ball. Yes. No. Better. Yes, away from the ball. Better, you were low. Away from the ball, low. Yes. 
away from the ball. Move away, move away. You're not moving away. So the last thing is your body position. Can you play a normal backhand to me? So let's say you're gonna play the backhand to the camera. Where would your feet be positioned? Yeah. Let's say you play a ball to the cones, to the to the cross courts, to the to the fence. How will you be positioned with the feet? Exactly. Okay. When you're playing a double wall, how would your position? Can you do your position if the ball is double wall? And if you play kind of to the center. Okay, so it's, it's similar. Most of the time. Close. Yeah, and then it's quite complicated. Yeah. Um, so what I want you to do is to have the left foot is in charge. Yeah. So the ball is coming, left foot is in charge. And then the last step is always with that foot. Because if, if, if the right foot is in charge, and the moment you do this, you're gone. Yeah. So this is why the footwork is uh, today's main topic. But I would not put it in the title, because if I put footwork in the title, nobody's watching, because all you guys and girls think that your footwork is amazing. Um, saying from somebody that has the worst footwork ever, so... I can say it. Yes, the left foot is leading. Left foot is leading. This is better. The right foot is just there to do the last step. Yeah, adjust to the height of the ball. Yes. Better. You were not low enough. So, two things. Left foot, and with your left foot, Adjust the height of the ball. So if your left foot is first and the ball is low, do your left foot down. If the ball is high, left foot high. That's good. Nice. Ma move. Yes. Yes, I like it, I like it. Yes. Yes. Great movement. Super good. Low. Yes, see, si, madame. Instead of doing the Japanese defense, 100 ho! You have to lower your stance, so you should go back. So, for Sasha today, was the most important thing left foot. And then the preparation. We, we went a little bit too technical today, but uh, yeah, we need to get into a rhythm. So I wanted to play a lot of balls from the drill, not really from rally so much, because I want to get a good rhythm to play loads of shots and also to get some confidence into Sasha's game. So then I don't want to do something from a rally straight away to do like a randomized drill, volley volley or whatever so uh well done today sas hasta luego ciao adios <laughs> oh, i got a kiss don't kiss your customers only your your wife